So Google might have just released the greatest image generation model we have ever seen with the introduction of Nano Banana. Now, this has led some people to go crazy saying it's a Photoshop killer, but in this video, we're gonna dispel fact from fiction. I'm gonna show you what it's really good at, what it still needs some work with. At the end, I'm even gonna dive into an N8N automation that shows you how you can go from image generation all the way to video generation with VO3 and Nano Banana all in one place. So we got a ton to cover in this video, so let's hop right into it. So let's talk about why everyone's calling it Nano Banana, just get that out of the way first. So its official name is Gemini 2.5 Flash Image, and that's the name it was given when it was released a couple of days ago. Now, for about a week or so, it's been secretly out, right? It was released under the code name Nano Banana on websites like this, LM Arena. Now, what's LM Arena? Well, it's a website that essentially allows you to do like a blind taste test of different AI models. You give it a prompt and you get different responses back from different models. You don't know which is which, and then you rank them. And during that time, Nano Banana, AKA 2.5 flash image has been crushing every other model when it comes to things like image edits or text to image. So without even having the official Google name associated with it, it's been absolutely killing it. And why has it been doing so well? Well, I think there's two big reasons. The first one is its speed. It's able to generate these images very quickly, especially if you compare it to something like OpenAI and ChatGPT. And secondly, and most importantly, is its character consistency. So you can look at something like this and you can see how good of a job it does with the original image and then creating new images based off of that and keeping the character, the face of the human being the same. This is something most image models are terrible at, and it's something Nano Banana does really, really well. And you should immediately start to think about practical applications for this, right? Here's an easy one, right? Person one wearing two different clothes, start to think of things like UGC modeling. This does it so well and so easily. And right now it's basically free. You can see right here in this demo, how it takes a light and just drags it over to the shelf. And then it instantly populates, right? This is the kind of stuff that this model does really, really well. And why some people are calling it right a Photoshop killer, because to do something like this or like this at this level, usually required some level of Photoshop expertise just a week ago. Now, where can you use Nano Banana? There's a couple places you can go to the official Gemini app, but I suggest going here, which is the Google AI studio. You can get here going to aistudio.google.com. You just have to log in, but you get access to everything Google has to offer, but in this like developer platform. So this is where we're going to put it through the test. And then we're going to go over to here to the build. And I'm going to show you the cool like app feature they have um, for this as well. Okay. So let's start this out by adding a picture of me. And then I'm adding a picture of a purple hoodie. And then I'm just saying, have the man wear the purple hoodie. This isn't a complicated prompt. And I've just thrown it two images in tandem as reference images. And we're going to see how it comes up with. And then I'm going to show you what the same response looks like if we use something like ChatGPT. So there it is. That took what? five, six seconds. And this is pretty good, right? Look at the face here and look at the face here. That is very similar. That is strikingly similar. And it does a pretty good job with the actual sweater. Now, is it perfect? No, but this is pretty dang good. And it keeps the background intact. Now here I am at GPT five with the same prompt and look at this hideous monstrosity. This is frightening. <laughs> this is this is scary. There's no character consistency. It really drops the ball when it comes to the actual hoodie itself, although it does get the text right. And this is the major issue that we had before when it came to image models on things like ChatGPT, right? It did really, really poorly. If you gave it pictures like this, of people who weren't celebrities of where there wasn't a ton of data out there for it to draw on, you were just giving it an image of somebody that it probably had never seen before and some sort of item, it can't put it together. You get this. Geez, <laughs> compared to this, this looks way more accurate. This is a huge step up and this took six seconds to do. This over here took like six minutes, it felt like, you know, so it's snappy and it's consistent. So here's another quick example of character consistency. We got LeBron with some Chinese Nike hoodie on with a rise and I told him, put him in a Bulls jersey and have him, you know, hold four logo. That easy, right? You can very quickly think about, okay, like marketing UGC type stuff with different characters holding whatever product you want. Now let's take a look at the build section, which is really interesting over here in the AI studio. You won't see this on the Gemini side. So if you hit build, um, Gemini has all these like little pre-built apps that you can not only use, but also edit. So if we go to home canvas here, you might've remembered this from when we went through the documentation and what it does, it's this little app where you just give it a product and a scene 
And then I can just drag the product to wherever I want. And just like in that demo they showed me, I can just drag it over here to the shelf and it's gonna automatically populate. Again, think of how difficult it would be to do this just a week ago, right? And to have it maintain consistency across the image and not slowly warp things as you iterated and iterated. It would've been really hard. And like I mentioned before, we can change what's going on in these pre-built apps. I just prompted on the bottom left, I said, add a feature where I can then prompt the final image to get another iteration of the scene that was created. So I wanna be able to prompt this image. I just do that and it's then gonna begin editing this app. So think of this almost like lovable, right? It's like little Gemini lovable and it's gonna create a new app for us that we can prompt through. Why is this useful? Well, think if you have some very great, cool idea of like, okay, I know how I really wanna use this new image generation API. I wanna turn this into a SaaS product. How can I quickly prototype it? Right here, you can prototype it for free inside of Gemini, right? Inside of their AI studio. I don't gotta go to Lovable and do all like the APIs there and do that whole connection. I can do it right here for free and just iterate and iterate and iterate. And Google's just letting me. Like it's a pretty awesome tool. Um, and it's using 2.5 Pro, like it's a thinking model. It's very robust. So I would definitely suggest having some fun with this. Go on this little app page, play with it to your heart's desire and see what you can make. And so you're really only limited by your imagination when it comes to this new nano banana image generation model. If you have some sort of use case that requires character consistency, this is now huge. And again, you can do so much here over in this build section. And again, like I said, I just had the ability, I just added the ability to do a prompt. And so we'll say add a, I can't read the text, add the dog to the bed. And now it's gonna add to the scene, pretty sweet. And there we go, there's there's our dog. <laughs> so that was Nana Banano in a nutshell. And for the rest of this video, we're gonna be working on this NNN workflow. Now, what this workflow does is it automates the entire media generation process, right? We are gonna be able to send an image to Nano via Telegram. It's gonna edit it. We're gonna give it a thumbs up or a thumbs down. And if we give it a thumbs up, that means it's gonna be automatically sent ahead to be turned into a video via VO3. Now, if we give it a thumbs down, it just goes back to the edit process and we keep playing with it till we get it to a place we like. But this allows us to have a one-stop shop, AKA Telegram, where we can give it images, have it edit them as we like, and then turn it into video marketing material. And so let's go through that with a quick example. I just dropped in an image of a random Razer mouse and said, have a gamer girl showing off this cordless mouse like an ad, make it a close up. Again, we're thinking ads, marketing, UGTC type stuff. So I send it. All right, so we sent the image off, we get a response back saying, hey, we sent it to the generator, and then we get the image back. Overall, pretty good. I will say you wonder where her index finger is, maybe it's behind here, but that's why we now have this approval process built in, right? So it says, here's the image, please choose an option and respond. So you click this and it takes you to this page and you either give it approved or you say, undo the edit and try again. So if I say approve, I now put in the prompt for the video. And if I want it to undo it, you can give it a different prompt. I'm gonna have it redo it, but actually do the same prompt and we'll see what happens again. Okay, so it came back with a new image. We like this one more because she actually has all her fingers from the looks of it. And so what we're gonna do is we are going to approve this one. So we'll hit respond, we go to open. And so now you're just giving a prompt to VO3 of how you want the video to go. Have the woman talk about how much she loves her Razer mouse. Submit that. And now it's gonna go through the video creation process. So while that's happening and we wait for that to occur, let's talk about what all just happened, what we went through. So we just went through this whole green part, right? It got the trigger, it got the image, and don't worry, we'll go through all these modules in detail. It waited till it got the image back, and then we were over here, the approval process. Now that we approved it, it goes up this create video pathway. And before when we told it, hey, no, we don't like that, it went back via this route, the edit path. So either it creates the video or it essentially starts from the beginning. So now what's happening is we sent that image here to the analyze image module. And this is where it's taking our, you know, basic prompt that was like, hey, tell her how much, have her talk about how much she loves the mouse. And it actually improves on it greatly. So we dive in here, we'll kind of jump ahead. You can see how we're saying, hey, take the prompt, take the URL. And then I want you to give a very descriptive prompt, right? Because VO3 is still kind of getting there and we want to do everything we can to make it as good as possible. So that's all this thing is doing. It's essentially taking a look at your prompt and making it better. And then it sends it to Kai AI or it's then going to wait till we get the movie back and then it'll send it to us via Telegram. 
You'll also notice over here, we have a get 1080p module. So Kai AI naturally gives it to you in 720p. You have the option here to insert this here, basically, and we'll give you a 1080p video instead, but it's just a little more expensive. So I leave that deactivated and that's kind of however the user wants to use it, right? If you wanna pay more for a better video, the option's there. All right, let's take a look at our video. I love the precision, speed, and ergonomic design of this mouse. All right, that was the video. Not amazing. We could definitely tweak the prompt a little bit, get a more polished output, but the automation works. So we have a foundation to approve upon and big picture, we know we can now properly integrate Nano Banana, the best image generator on the market right now, into a workflow like this that can give us video media on the back end, right? So that's what's really important here. So that was the demo. Now you know how it works high level. Let's now go through module by module so you know what's supposed to go where and how to connect it yourself. So this automation begins with the Telegram trigger. It doesn't need to be Telegram. It could be Slack, WhatsApp, whatever. It just needs some sort of place where it's going to ingest your prompt and the image. Now, Telegram is free, which is why I like to use it. And we've done tons of videos before that show you how to set up Telegram. So I'm not gonna dive deep into how to do that. If you have questions, I want you just to go here, go to Open Docs, and then you're just gonna follow the instructions for how to set up your Telegram credentials. It is very simple and straightforward, and they break it down nicely. If you have questions, you can even chat with the docs, which they just recently added. And then from there, we need to get the file path because as you know, we're giving it an image and there's a ton of information it gives us. And furthermore, we need to actually not just get the image ID, we need to get like the HTTP, the URL that's associated with it. So that's what's happening over here in the URL. Now, this is important. You need to change this highlighted part. This is your bot token. This is what bot father gives you when you originally use it for your credentials and for like to set up your account, this is the access token. So if you don't know where this is, it's from your conversation with Botfather. If you have no idea who Botfather is, go back and connect your Telegram and you'll understand. So this is different for you. This is my bot access code. I will be deleting the bot after this, so do not worry. But this needs to be changed. This is different for you. Next, we're just mapping the file ID, right? And by doing so, we're essentially giving it the HTTP the, the URL so that it can reference it when it comes time to edit our images. From there, we just have a set node so it's easier for us to deal with the variables. We have an image received response. So this is just to let you know like, hey, they got the image, right? This is all automatic. From there, we then generate the image with Nano Banana via Kai AI. So this is where you're gonna have to set up your Kai AI credentials. If we go into Kai AI and we go to Nano Banana, You'll notice there's two sections here. There's Nano Banana, which is, hey, I just want you to create images from scratch. And then there's the Nano Banana Edit. We are using the Nano Banana Edit because it's assuming that you have some sort of basic, you know, product or image that you want to edit before you turn it into a video. So that's why we're using Nano Banana Edit. And this is where we get all the API information for it. If you're wondering how I filled it all out, what I did is I went down here to curl. I copied it came up here to NADN, I went to import curl, and I pasted it in here. From there, all this was filled out for me, including the URL and the JSON payload. Now to connect your account, what you need is you need a generic credential type, a header auth, and you're going to create a header auth here. You're going to click this for name, you're gonna put authorization. And then for your value, it's going to be bearer, capital B, space, and then your API key. Right? Remember how to get your API key. It's on the Kai AI API site. So this is what should look like. Authorization, bearer space, and then your actual API key. Switch it back to fixed. It'll look like that. So you don't need to set any headers. We need to send a body. And this is what the body is going to look like. So the model is Google Nano Banana Edit. Callback URL is going to look like this. And then your input is the essentially the message you gave it, the caption when you talk to Telegram. And then the image URLs is pulling from the previous module. And also this is the number of images it will create. For here, we just have one. Next, we have this wait module and you'll notice it's on webhook call. This means when we request the image to be created, we don't have to sit there forever and like do a pull and then like do a wait and do like 20 seconds wait and then keep checking. No, this is just gonna automatically go once it's been created. Okay, once we get the signal that the image is done processing, we have a set image that's just dealing with the variables again. And we have Telegram send us the image back alongside a message saying, hey, what do you want to do with it? So that's what's happening here. And we have two options, which is, hey, approved, send it for video processing, or undo this edit 
and try again with the original image. And we have a space for the user to put in the new prompt they want. Then comes the approval processing. This is just the large language model taking in that response and basically saying like, hey, what do you want to do with this? So either it's going to be an undo or it's going to do a video. And we give it some examples of how we wanted to process that data because we wanted to give us two items, right? We want the intent, so video or undo. And then we want the prompt because we have to map both of those in follow on modules. Like I said before, we then have our switch node. So, hey, are we starting from the beginning doing more edits or are we pushing ahead and analyzing the video? Now, we already looked at this one before where it essentially beats up our prompt. And from there, it sends it to Kai AI again, but this time for VO3 fast. And again, just like the previous Kai AI module, I got this using a curl request. This is all going to look the same for you. You header off again for Kai AI, and you can look at what we're actually passing. So we're passing the prompt that's coming from the previous module. We have the image URLs, VO3 fast. If you want to use VO3 like the big dog model, you would just um, append this. You just get rid of this. So it just said VO3. Callback URL. So we're doing that whole weight module again. And then aspect ratio seeds and no fallback needed. You shouldn't really have to touch anything there. Um, then we do the weight module, same as before. It's essentially just waiting for that response from Kai AI saying, hey, your video is ready. And once it's ready, it sends it back to us via Telegram. And again, looking at this 1080p module, like I said, you actually don't need to touch any of this stuff here. This is all set up for you already. You would just plug it right into here is what you would do. And then you would have the 1080p um, video sent to Telegram. So that's how you would do it. This is optional. Again, you just have to pay a little more for 1080p. But yeah, I know I went through that real fast, but that's how that automation works. You send an image, edit it, thumbs up, thumbs down, push the video. Now, what are some constraints of this automation? Because we are working inside of Telegram and we're, you know, we, we there is a cost to like doing everything in one place. Well, for one right now, this can only take one image at a time. So kind of like I talked about before, there are ways around that. And that would be sending multiple images as one image, right? Putting it all on one platter, so to speak. Um, the other things are you can really only edit that original image. We could have it to where you could edit your edits over and over again, but that created a very convoluted automation. That's something to mess with later. And then right now it only creates one video. We could have it create multiple videos. Again, that will probably be up for follow on automations. And right now it just sends the video to you. It doesn't automatically post it in anywhere. Again, I have previous videos that show you how to automatically post across many platforms. Check out the post to nine platforms at once video if you want to see that. So there's a lot of room for improvement here, especially in terms of the video side. But again, the big picture for today is like, can we hone in on nano banana and can we use that for automations, which this thing does. So that pretty much covers it, guys. I hope you now have a better idea of what's going on with Gemini's new image gen model, how cool it is. And I hope the gears are starting to turn in your mind of like, okay, how can I really apply this to my particular use case? So as always, the uh, template is available. Check it out on the school. Let me know in the comments what you're thinking, and I'll see you guys around.